ladies and gentlemen, and uh, welcome to this extremely interesting conversation about unraveling the DNA of India's future urban cities. Um, I want to do, for the benefit of our television audience, a quick introduction of the gentleman on stage. Mr. Rajiv Talwar is the CEO of DLF Limited. Anshuman Magazine is the chairman, South India, Southeast Asia, CBRE. Anuj Puri, chairman and country head of JLL. Sanjay Gupta, Managing Director, PNB Housing Finance, and Sachin Sandeer is the Global Managing Director, Emerging Businesses at RICS. It's a brilliant time to have this conversation. We're talking so much about smart cities. We're talking so much about, uh, you know, housing for all, which by itself is such an ambitious and hopeful concept. But the people in this room and those on this panel specifically live in the real world. And we realize how far away we are from our cities being anything close to smart and being at a situation where every Indian family does have a home. Mr. Talar, I'll start with you. My question to you is this, whether it is smart cities, whether it's housing for all, there needs to be a relationship of trust between government and industry Absolutely. and industry and consumer and industry and homeowner or final occupier of that home. That particularly at this point of time is shockingly low. Correct. Is, it, is that the point we have to fix first before we can talk about anything else? No, I don't think so. I think the trust should be there. I think the problem which has really arisen is that there is an overcapacity created. And in that overcapacity, rates have obviously moderated. I think not only in NCR, all over India, we've had an oversupply of residential space, which will take maybe three to four or even seven to eight quarters, which is about two years. Once that happens, again, and one can depend on bureaucracy for that, we can depend on policies, they seldom allow approvals so fast that there would be adequate amount of housing being created, which is the only way to keep prices so, moderate. So what you're saying is there is an oversupply, but That's there isn't it. a trust deficit. There is, there is a trust deficit definitely between the media, the judiciary, <laughs> the bureaucracy, and the developers, because each one of them, in India, everyone derives power, including the media. From what? The consumer, the farmer, and the poor. All kinds of regulation and all kinds of power can be exercised in these three names. I think right now you're doing it in the name of the consumer. And therefore you say that there is a trust deficit. This is a 60-year history. If everyone has been provided housing, it's not only a state effort. I think the private sectors played a very major role. So why should there be a trust deficit? I think better than use the word trust deficit okay. would be that can we all work together? There is a dream of the Prime Minister, housing for all. Let us give a boost to housing, to infrastructure, and to urbanization. Right. I think that should be the common vision, not trust deficit or anything okay, else. Okay, so, so my point was basically, if we look at regulation that's being written right now, yeah. if we look at uh, you know, the, the tone of the regulatory bill, Correct. there is there some sort of lack of trust. And I'll, I'll bounce this to Anuj. Anuj, my point is that obviously, given the cities that we're looking at, a home for every Indian or the number of homes that need to be constructed cannot absolutely be constructed by the government agencies alone. There has to be a partnership where the private sector comes together. And in order for that to happen, government and private sector need to be able to see eye to eye and sit across from the table, which was my question. Yes. In order for that to happen, how do we bring these two agencies together at the table so we can actually start building? And it's a very valid point, and I, I pretty much agree with what Rajiv is saying, is that I think we have to move away from that trust mm -hmm. and use the word that you used, for partnership, collaboration, cooperation. Uh, between the various stakeholders, you know, whether it's the consumer, financial institution, government, developer, you know, uh, the media, I, I think we will really need to do a lot of effort to make the sector move. So my, my submission is that we will need to look at this a lot more carefully. Your points are very pertinent. It needs to be looked at it from everybody's angle. Otherwise, the government is going to continue to paint us as someone who is non-trustable, as the industry, and all the constituents of that will be looked under the microscope, and then there will be severe regulations, which may actually be counterproductive Productive. to the real estate uh, sector. You know, there are, there, are, there are two other 
portions of this market that have to take responsibility. And I'll take responsibility on behalf of consumers. Because in the world uh, that Mr. Talwar was describing, where everybody thought that if they bought something, it would double, it would triple, customers went out and bought anything. Yeah. They signed terrible one-sided contracts, where it was not 6%, uh, it was 2%. Yeah. And in some cases, I mean, there was no compensation. Thing was that they, they were buying it. like vegetables. At times, I used to be very worried for my customers. You know, they, they are sitting in Dubai, they are buying something in Bangalore or somewhere, and they just have a leaflet. And they will come to the banker, now you start funding it, I've already paid my 15% or my 20%. And nobody has gone and seen the location, nobody has done any due diligence. So everybody will have to be responsible. And we have learned a lesson, this is a long sort of a slowdown uh, period that we have all, uh, you know, uh, experiencing. Let us learn our lesson and, and regather, re-collaborate, reposition, and relaunch ourselves as an industry. I think that the, the customer is learning that lesson the hard way. The other area that needs to take responsibility for where we are today is local government and the speed or the lack of the speed with which permissions get handed out. On some, at some point, neither the new regulation nor the larger central government or state governments are taking cognizance of what's happening on the ground in terms of permissions that get handed out, um, occupation certificates that get held at ransom for money that's demanded from developers. If we are to achieve any sort of goal, even halfway through building homes for every Indian, this is something that's going to need, going to, need to be looked at immediately. Uh, absolutely. And I think the other challenge is, I don't think there's enough capacity in the government. Uh, leave alone, forget the processes. Uh, there's not enough people. In, in fact, we were earlier talking about infrastructure development or any housing supply. Till the time the government does not expand its capacity and then attract quality people to govern, that would be a major problem. As far as the uh, approval process is concerned, this is a big uh, issue and we've been, we've been discussing this to death nearly. Uh, but the fact remains that we'll have to make the government accountable. Like you're making the developers accountable, the government has to be accountable even in the new regulation uh, bill, which is regulator bill, which is coming. Corruption is a major issue. I think all the developers have been bringing uh, that out, which is not an easy thing no, to... But uh, to be honest, we've, we've approached the central government, the urban development ministry, the housing ministry repeatedly, and they've all told us local level corruption needs to be handled at the local level. But the ground reality is we are a federal a state country and we cannot, Centric really can't do anything with the state. It has to be at the state level. However, I think the good part of it, this is, will be difficult, it's not going to change. The good part today, I feel where there is some hope, is that the states are competing today. So today, uh, they would want to do, uh, you know, we are working with some large uh, foreign company which wants to put a big industrial park. It will be the largest in the country. They have chosen a state where the state has assured them they will get personal attention, they will be quick decision making, they will get the supporting infrastructure. Once that investment goes into that state, I'm sure the un other states will be under pressure to perform. So I'm hoping that that, that competition, uh, where the politicians today are under pressure to provide jobs, uh, where economic issues have become larger in elections than caste and other, other issues. As India becomes more educated, those economic issues will drive states to reduce bureaucracy and hopefully to some extent reduce corruption. Hey, you believe, I'd like to yeah, just step in on, yes. this, on, on this point. I think I'll just go from the negative to the positive first. Mm -hmm. So I think the, ne the, 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 the negative is really we know residential being the way it is and the NCR market being in the doldrums. But I think the good, the, the good silver lining really as far as real estate is concerned is that commercial is still doing well. So it's not all, uh, you know, it's, it's not all doomsday so to say. Uh, the other aspect that I'd like to talk about purely from a negative perspective, when, when I say negative, I'm not really talking about everybody, but I'm really talking about the larger component of the industry, which is not delivered. Uh, so delivery has been a huge issue. And part of the reason why we are in the doldrums that we are in, and part of the reason why the real estate sector does not get its uh, due, is really the perception that is, uh, you know, this is a very risky sector. And that perception, we've all contributed to that perception. I'm not saying, uh, you know, the top 20, 25 developers aside, there's a significant component of the developers that have not delivered. And I think lack of delivery issues, whether it's because of capacity, whether it's because of approvals, the, the, the reality is today, 
if you were to really look at what is the biggest uh, agenda from a, from a monetary policy perspective, and we all talk about risk, risk weightage uh, associated with real estate being very high, but till such time that you know the the the, the situation remain, remains the way it is in terms of uh, the nexus between lenders to some extent and developers and valuations being the way they are, uh, you know that risk weightage is not going to come down until the time the perception changes of the of the sector as well. The other thing is that if real estate regulation, and you know we are talking about whether housing for all and uh, you know smart cities and all this is reality, is is it going to happen for sure? Uh, and uh, the last date for uh, uh, most states to actually set up a RERA uh, is really sometime in September. But a lot of the states have not really started work. So there are some progressive states that are that have done considerable amount of work. There are states that have not done uh, any, any work at all. So there, it's again uh, a question of. Uh, you know, w whether we'll actually meet the timelines and whether the ambitious vision that is there is actually going to get implemented. Uh, having said that, RERA will provide a level playing field and with approvals uh, essentially becoming a prerequisite, essentially speaking, it will mean that the sector will undergo some kind of a consolidation and I don't really see uh, the, the thousands of developers that we see today but I see a lesser number of very good reputed developers who will consolidate and uh, uh, bring about uh, the kind of delivery and uh, ex expertise that uh, the sector really needs. But for the next 24 to 48 months, I, I don't know, 24 to 36 months, uh, the sector is going to bleed as far as the residential space is concerned. I, ha I hate to say it, but uh, everybody's taken a fairly positive view, but I definitely think that the residential is not uh, looking up specifically for the NCR region in a hurry. I think he's correct that yes, if you're talking about the NCR, why the NCR? It's all over the country that there has been a slowdown. I think the only agency which does not recognize that there was a slowdown in the country is the government, whether it's the central government or the state government. You have contracts or highways, they say, sorry, the highway should have been built. So what if the land was not acquired? Well, if you have... Anybody who's setting your ready reckoner rates or your circle... Your rates, ready reckoner rates are going up. Yeah. I mean, today, Haryana, fortunately, has been a state which is lowered in recognition. In Delhi, you can get properties all over which are below the oh, yes. circle rate. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. So I think, to a large extent, all of us, when we talk, we talk in silos and we talk from individual perception. But I think the truth is that either we all start thinking together and say, let's go ahead. Or, like you said, Rera's coming in. It will also say, okay, occupation or completion. And people will get a choice to say, if occupation is there, let me stress on the completion mm. so that you get straight away cases which are in your basket. And if occupation is not there, then even worse. Shiman said, because I believe that if we are going to do smart cities, whatever a smart city might finally look at, I look like, I don't think anybody's fully defined what a smart city is, or if we are going to build those homes, there are two massive challenges before us. One is the money that is going to be needed in That's terms it. of investment. The other is the sort of silo that the government lives within, yeah. where local level, whether we're talking about the DDA or we're talking about MADA or we're talking about the municipal corporations in all of our cities, who actually have to be facilitators and not people who sort of block and control development. I think if we can find solutions for these two points, everything else will somehow iron itself out. And where is competition the answer? Which is my question. Anshuman said if states compete with each other, that will force them to sort of be well, more that's efficient. One, that's certainly. I mean, competition is always good. But I think when we are saying that consolidation would take place, we are working against that. Okay, some good people will last. Some bad leaves will fall off. But then what is the kind of competition? You haven't seen greater competition than in Gurgaon. But today, yes, I mean, you are, when you're talking of NCR, where is their excess capacity? It's certainly not in Delhi. It's only either in Gurgaon or in Noida and Greater Noida. So why is there a greater capacity? Why are people not moving in? I think the capacity to complete. Yeah. Yeah. I think there is a serious problem in India that we do not have 
the execution, execution capacity. Yes. Yeah. And yeah. that will also change the sentiment. You know, if we see some deliveries happening in masses, hmm. the large projects, I think the public is going to react in a positive manner. But my question and, to and Mr. Yes, Gupta is where is the money going to come okay. from? Now, if we're going to build no. smart cities, will you fund the municipal yeah, corporations? So, so that is Do where they have yes. the governance that you, no, you yes, know, that has a plan. Yeah. You know, that is where, so uh, I started my career from Uttar Pradesh. The government has actually, the exchequer has actually invested a lot of money in your local bodies, in your development authorities, in your housing boards. And all of them exist today also. So I think, you know, going back, I recall there used to be municipality bonds, which were government guaranteed. The government local bodies or the competent authorities, which are still running but are in sort of state of comatose, have to be reignited. They have to be given back their authorities. They have to become more commercial and they have to be the catalyst to make the private sector which comes there work and collaborate and sort of excite them enough and enhance their pace, right? So, so that sort of a, I think a rejig is required. Otherwise, this will be a dream. We, we, we talk about lack of funding. No doubt we need a lot of funding. But the sad part is there is so much money sitting with the government which is not getting utilized. So before even if we talk about, you know, how we can raise money, there are many schemes, every budget, We'll say, okay, we are allocating 5,000 crores to this scheme. I wish someone would do a, um, a study and how much of that money is utilized. Without the study, I can guarantee you, they, they put an education cess, raised thousands of crores. It didn't go into uh, education. There, is, uh, there was a, a scheme of a billion dollars, which they said the, uh, the real estate industry could uh, get ECB and should not exceed billion dollars. I, I don't know if anybody really got availed of that ECB. Uh, there are all these, uh, you know, Indira Gandhi, Avas, Yojana, that I don't, they keep on changing the names. A lot of the money is there and every year they allocate some more money, everybody claps on the budget, okay, uh, you know, some shares keep on going, okay, there's been money allocated to this sector. But does that money get allocated? It doesn't. The government of India is sitting on huge amount of funding in municipalities. Now, this doesn't mean that we don't need money, we need huge amount of money. But even if what the corpus of funds, the municipalities and some of the state governments are sitting are under different schemes, gets utilized, that itself will be a big achievement. I wish that money which the government is sitting on in different pockets, different states, different municipalities, it's so, a massive know, that, amount that of money. That leads to a very important question and, and um, you know, I want both of you all to answer it, Anush, you wanted to come in. The fact that we are not looking at cleaning up the government, how do municipal corporations maintain their accounts? Do they actually make, the, should they make those accounts public? Are they using all of the money? We know that Bangalore, for example, did not qualify for the first round of the Smart City Challenge no. because its municipalities' books were a mess and they weren't able to actually tell the, you know, the board whether the, they were making any money or they were losing money, didn't even have that information. So using the money is one thing, but actually finding it and keeping track of it, because where is, where is it leaking through the systems of the government, none of us know. So, so uh, Faye, I, I go a little bit more fundamental. I am saying is whilst it is very nice, Faye, to go and say is, consumer was perhaps not educated because he was a speculator or, uh, or a short-term investor. Uh, you know, government's not perhaps doing its justice, but there is something that's going in the back of their mind, Faye, that they are saying is this sector is not right. I mean, we are reluctant to give this sector the money. And that is where I feel is that the sector yet has to go through its consolidation phase. I mean, Rajiv will raise money at 9%, 8%, and there will be more and more that Sanjay would want to pump in the money. But that's not what the solution is. The yeah. solution is that that cleansing, Sanjay, has to happen because right. I realized it, that it is no point discussing in rooms like this way. It was when there were other sectors which were competing with real estate, and then you discovered that the consumer was a lot more enamored to move to the other sector, and that's when my mind opened up, the judiciary, why is it going hammer and tongue against real estate? This is what they're seeing, the consumers say. Why is the government nervous in spending money and giving in the grants? Is because they're seeing what's happening with the consumer. So I think th it, there is a time that we have to start reflecting and saying is that perhaps Faye Rera is good. Yeah. It needs consolidation. It needs cleansing up. And once that happens, then obviously government has to do more 
municipalities have to do more. I agree with Anshuman that there will be competitiveness, but if, you know, corruption needs to go in more. But the fault is not only outside. The fault is, is, in, us. is, is in us as oh, well. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. One is that, you know, the advent of Vera is going to bring method to madness. So all of us who are sitting on this dais are, are the bad people of the society. We will at least have a benchmark to sort of say, well, I followed this rule, mm -hmm. which the government set it. At times, bankers also design failures. So this entire real estate funding has to have a longer door-to-door -door term. And the credit flow in this sector has to happen from long-term bonds. What is happening is that, you know, the long term or the credit market or the debt market in the country is shallow and narrow. So there are limitations also on the financing institutions like ours to raise funds for these uh, projects. With RERA, the safest thing is you start selling when your condominiums are complete in all respect. Then you are out of it. But for that, you need door to door at least seven years, 84 months yeah. funding. I think, you know, this market coming down mm. is really like you talked about cleansing. Uh, I think this is a huge blessing in disguise, although there is pain, and this pain this time has been longer than expected. The, 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 the big part is like, you know, in India, uh, if you look at the Western markets, when the markets decline, it would, uh, the pain would be for years. We have not seen long-term deep pain, except now, this time. Yes. And I think this will be really great for the Indian real estate market in the short term. I'm, I know developers, us, everybody in the real estate market right now uh, are, are suffering. But the fact remains that in the long term, this will be fantastic for the country. Reason being, because of this downturn, consumers uh, are getting a better deal. One-sided contracts have become uh, what you call balanced contracts. There's a big wake-up call as far as the consumer is concerned. And more importantly, regulation is coming in place. Although, as far as the uh, RERA bill is concerned, I feel it needs to be balanced. Yeah. Uh, it should not be a deterrent for development, which I feel it is right now, so that it has to, you know, I think they've just taken, uh, consumers should be protected, but I think developers should be taken uh, care of also. My feel is in the next four to five years, we'll be closer to a mature, a modern real estate market uh, than we would have been before. So I think this is very positive, and I, I feel for the next four, five years, it'll be an extremely exciting market. I think I'd like to make a couple of points. Uh, you know, I'll just move away from the fact that we've very, been very developer-centric right now. I think we'll just move on. We've talked a little bit about regulation, but I'll move on to the fact that if you really look at the direction that the government has taken with the Smart Cities mission, you know, they're, they're very clear about the fact that the municipal corporations haven't kept pace with the needs of the changing times. So essentially speaking, the governance structure that they're talking about is really a SPV-based, very corporatized kind of a structure. Where, where essentially speaking, there is an uh, accountability of a CEO with, where, with very clear metrics, uh, you know, which are, which are definitely going to be aligned and assigned uh, to the performance of the city. And there are actually project management teams actually being deputed to actually make sure that those milestones are being completed. So in a way, uh, we, 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 we've talked about the fact that the municipal corporations or the urban local bodies haven't really performed, but the fact is that the direction seems to be a right direction, at least in terms of uh, the way it is moving. I think two things that concern me still about the smart cities mission and really the housing for all larger agenda is the fact that if you look at the, the 31 cities that have actually been selected as of now, of the 31 cities, the, if you look at the allocation of funds that have currently been deployed or are actually envis envisaged to go in, uh, about 34% of it is going to go into built environment, which is more real estate centric. Uh, about 22% is going to go into transportation. Uh, about 17% is going to go into uh, water and waste management and about 6% is going to go into energy. So that's about 89% of your total investments uh, you know, that are going to go into, this, in, into the cities. What is concerning for me is really the fact that I think one of the key components is institutional capacity. Okay? We've talked about capacity in the private sector, but we, we're talking about capacity, whether it's the public sector or the private sector or a combination of the two. I don't think that is still yet addressed in the remaining 11%. The remaining 11% funds are allocated right now, about 7% is going to go into technology, and another 4 or 5% is going to go, to, go into e-governance. Mm -hmm. So if you really see, uh, technology itself really is 
technically speaking, we are talking about smart cities, but we are really talking about smart upgradation, more retrofit or redevelopment so we of an existing. Have more, uh, more, 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 more going to technology. Absolutely, more funds for technology, and more, most importantly, what is conspicuous by their absence is the fact that in JNN URM used to have a lot of unspent funds mm. on uh, uh, capacity building, but there is absolutely no funds which have been allocated for institutional capacity building, which I think is absolutely critical and fundamental uh, to any. Uh, hopes that we will have of basically doing housing for all or building these smart cities. Unfortunately, so, we've run out of time on this conversation. I hope, you know, whatever has come up in this conversation is something that we can carry into conversations with government and with other members of the industry. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you.